Welcome back. In this video, we're going to do a few more subtraction problems involving borrowing. And I really want to make sure we do a lot of these, because I think this is where, when people first learn it, there's the most confusion. But once you really understand what you're doing, hopefully you find that, that it's, it's pretty straightforward. And then we'll do a couple of word problems. So let's do the last couple of problems on page 33 in the, uh, what is it, the, the primary mathematics 3A book. This is the US edition. So we let's say we have, and actually I'm going to do this one several ways, because I want to show you that all of these ways are equivalent. Maybe what you learn in your school is a little bit different, but they're all essentially doing the same thing, and I want you to learn that. So we have 8,007 minus 3,429. So how do we think about this? Well, 3 is less than 8, but all of these numbers are greater than the numbers above them, right? So we're going to have to do some borrowing. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. I'm actually going to write the problem over again right here, because I want to do it two different ways. One way, I'm going to explain what's actually happening. And one way is actually just really, really fast. So let's go over the fast way first, because it never hurts to know how to do these problems really, really fast. So let's say if I started at the ones place here, and I have the 7, but the 7 is less than this 9. So I have to I have to take something from the rest of the number, right? And the only thing I ever take is, you know, if, I have, if I'm in the ones place, the only thing I ever take is 10, right? So think of it this way, and ignore it if it confuses you. But I have 7 here, and then this 8,000, or I could just, if I just look at those three places, those that 800, what is that? That's 800 tens, right? Why do I say that? Well, because the last zero in the 800 is actually in the tens place. So you can, and this is kind of sal math. I don't think this is really taught anywhere, but it's a really fast way of doing some of these borrowing problems. You could view this as 800 tens. You need one 10 here so that you can make the 7 into a 17. So what do you do? Well, you borrow one of those 800 tens. So what's 800 tens minus 110? What's 800 minus 1? Well, it's 799. 799. And then you take that extra 10 and you add it to the ones place and you get 17. And then you're ready to subtract. 17 minus 8. Uh, sorry, 17 minus 9 is 8. 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 4 is 5. 7 minus 3 is 4. Now you should only do what I just did if you're really comfortable with how things are working and you understand the intuition. Don't try to skip steps if you're not sure what the step is. And on the left side now, I'll do it kind of in the foolproof way so that you, you really make sure you understand what you're doing. So we have the same problem, because it's you know, the, the numbers on top are smaller than the numbers on the bottom. And of course, it's the same problem, because it's, well, it's the same problem. So here, we can actually start borrowing on we can start going from left to right. And it's going to have the exact same result, as you'll see in a second. Let me switch the same color. So this 0 is less than this 4, right? The 0 hundreds is less than 4 hundreds. So, and we have 8,000 here. So why don't we take one of these 8,000s, so we only have 7,000 left, and convert it to 10 hundreds. So we convert it to 10 hundreds. But now we have this 0 tens is less than 2 tens. So let's take some of this 10 hundreds, or let's take one of these 10 hundreds, so we only have 900 left, and give one of those hundreds to the tens place, and now we have 10 tens. Right? Well, we're almost done, but we see that the 7 ones is less than the 9 ones. So why don't we borrow 10 from the tens place? So if we borrow 10, we only have 9 tens left. And then we add that 10 to the ones place, and we have 17. Notice, the end product was the exact same thing. We now have a 7,000, a 900, a 90, and a 17 in the ones place. And we can subtract. 17 from 9 is, uh, sorry, 9 from 17 is 8. 2 from 9, or 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 4 is 5. And 7 minus 3 is 4. So the same result. And they got it the same place. And I want you to think about why both of these worked. And hopefully I gave you a little intuition uh, as far as why they worked. Let's do a couple more. I might not do all of them, just depending on how much time we have. So let's say we have 9,403 minus 4,200. 
275. 4 is less than 9, 2 is less than 4, but 7 is not less than 0, and 3 is not less than 5. And actually, let me do it this, the two ways that we just learned, because I think this will be instructive. And it's good to, to see all the different ways. And maybe you'll come up with a new way of doing it. Actually, my cousin, when he was 8, figured out a new way. But, and, and, and it actually was, was pretty fast. But anyway, let's go back to this problem. So what's the, the conventional way? Or I guess nothing's a conventional way. They're, they're teaching how they, they change how they teach these things every year, it seems like. But we could say, well, the 4 is less than the 9, so we're cool there. The 2 is less, well, this is 4,000 is less than 9,000. The 200 is less than the 400, we're cool there. But the 70 is not less than this 0 tens, right? So why don't we borrow 100, so we only have 300 left, and turn that into 10 tens. But then we have the 3 is less than the 5. So why don't we borrow one of our 10 tens, we only have 9 left, and put that 10 in the 1's place. So we have 13. So that was kind of what I call the conventional way of doing it. The less conventional way of doing it is to actually start at the right-hand side and say, well, this 3 is less than that 5, right? The 3 is less than the 5, so let me borrow from here. Wait, but I can't borrow from 0 tens. But wait, I could go one more space and I could borrow from 40 tens. Right? Four, this is 400, right? But 400 is the same thing as 40 tens. So let me borrow one of those 40 tens. So then I have 39 tens left. And add that extra 10 to this base. I get 13. And notice we have the exact same outcome, and we can subtract. 13 minus 5 is 8. 9 minus 7 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 9 minus 4 is 5. On this side, 13 minus 5 is 8. 9 minus 7 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. 9 minus 4 is 5. I encourage you to try to understand both things I did, because neither of them are magic, and they should make sense to you from a place value point of view. But whichever one you're more comfortable with, stick with that, and just practice tons and tons and tons of problems. And, and you know, if you run out of problems in your workbook, make up problems. That's actually a good way to learn. So let's do one more. And, I'll, and, and I think you'll find that this one is especially quick using the, 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 the technique that's not necessarily condoned in your, condoned means encouraged or, or supported, but it's not necessarily condoned by the Singapore math. But I think it's good for you to learn every different possible way. So if we have 10,000, right? Now we're doing a five digit number, but hopefully you know this is a ones, tens, hundreds place, thousands place, 10 thousands place. Every place we go, we're just, it's 10 bigger. Right? I mean, hopefully, you, you, if I gave you a, a seven-digit number, we could, you could actually deal with it, because you just know every, every time you go one place to the left, that digit just represents something 10 times bigger than the digit to the right. Right? 10 is 10 times bigger than ones. Hundreds is 10 times bigger than tens. Thousand is 10 times bigger than 100. And 10,000 is 10 times bigger than 1,000. Well, let's take 10,000 minus 5,721. I'll do this one both ways as well. 10,000 minus 5,721. So we have a 0 here. We need to borrow some. Well, I don't want to say borrow, because you have to take it, right? But you can't take from 0. You can't take from 0. So let's start at the left-hand side. This thousands is 0 thousands is less than 5,000. So let's borrow from the 10,000 spot. So let's, there's only one 10,000 there. So let's take it, and let's put it into the thousand spot. So we have 10,000 now in the thousands. We don't have enough hundreds here. So let's borrow one of the thousands, and then we have 10 hundreds. We don't have enough tens, so let's borrow one of the hundreds. Not borrow, take one of the hundreds. And then we have 10 tens. And then, well, we, have, we don't have enough ones, so let's borrow one of the tens. And then we'll have 10 ones. And then we're ready to subtract. 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. 9 minus 7 is 2. 9 minus 5 is 4. Sorry, 9 minus 5 is 4. My brain is malfunctioning. Let's do it this way. So how can we think about it? We could start at the right-hand side. We say, oh, well, this 0 is just not acceptable. We need, a, we need to get a 10 here somehow. So let's look to the left of it. We can't borrow from here. We can't borrow from here and here. We can't borrow from here and here and here. But if we, bar if we look at this entire number, 10,000 is the same thing as 1,000 tens, right? This is this thing that looks like 1,000, since it starts in the tens place here, that's 1,000 tens, right? 
So why don't we just bar just one of them? All we need is one ten here, right? So if we if we have a thousand of something and we take one of them, how do we how many do we have left? Well, what's one thousand minus one? It's nine hundred ninety nine. So this has one thousand tens. If we bar one of them, we have nine hundred ninety nine tens left. And then we take that ten that we took or borrowed and we put it in the ones place. Ten minus one is nine. Nine minus two is seven. Nine minus seven is two. Nine minus five is four. Do this only if you understand what's happening. Or uh, otherwise, do this. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. But either way is fine, and they both should make intuitive sense to you if if you think about the number places. And you know what? If they don't, I encourage you to draw out those diagrams like you have in the Singapore Math Book, where you have the disks that with a thousand and hundreds in them, or to do the expanded notation like I have it, where you know I'd write five thousand seven hundred twenty-one as five thousand plus seven hundred plus twenty. Plus one. Do it either way, and you should find that things work out. And in all mathematics, I encourage you, even if you can get an A on a test, even if you find the homework easy, play around with the numbers, experiment with them, really get a feel for them. Because if you really understand mathematics in the third grade or the fourth grade, when you do the fifth grade, the sixth grade, or the twelfth grade, or college, or you do your PhD in physics, it's going to be that much easier. Anyway, I will see you in the next video.